extra apologies to all the subscribers of Coding Decoded. I couldn't upload the solution for daily lead code problems from the past two days. There's a very important office work that is going on. My team has been working on it from approximately one and a half years now, and we have the delivery in the month of January. So it's a really intense pressure situation that has built up, and I hope we will sail through it really well. Uh, without further ado, let's focus our attention on to today's lead code problem, uh, which is lexographically smallest equivalent string. So I'll be explaining you these examples as well as the question and the solution why the presentation. The question is based on the concept of union find and for those who will who have been following along who already know union find through my previous videos, uh, they will feel that this is an easy question. Yes, you heard it right. It's not a medium level question. It's an easy question. The concept of union find is not new to the subscribers of Coding Decoded. However, if you are not aware of it, don't worry. I'm back to the problem. The problem says you are given two strings and those strings basically help us identify the mapping between characters. For example, uh, the 0th index character of string S1 will map to 0th string character of string S2. So P map maps with M and M maps with P vice versa. So there is no direction involved between the mapping between P and M. From M you can go towards P or from P you can go towards M. Similarly, from A you can go towards O and from O you can go towards A. Uh, from R you can go towards R and vice versa. From K you can go towards R and uh, from R you can go towards K. Similarly, I is mapped to E, E is mapped to I and vice versa. And at last, uh, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the fifth character of S1 maps to fifth character of S2, which is R and S. So those are connected with each other. Now the question says you are given any base string and you need to identify the lexicographically smallest equivalent string of the base string using this mapping that has been identified. So when I say lexicographically smallest, uh, if there is a mapping between M and P out of M and P, which one will be given precedence? M will be given precedence because M is lexicographically smaller than P. So M will be given priority over P. Remember this out of A and O, which, which one is the lower one? A is the lower one. So A will be given priority over O out of R and R since both of them are same. It really doesn't matter out of K and R, which one will be given priority? K will be given priority over R out of E and I, which one is the lower one? Which is the lower one? E is the lower one and E will be given priority over I. And out of R and S, which one uh, is the lower one? R is the lower one and R will be given precedence. However, there is a transitive connection that I, that I could see over here. K maps to R and R maps to S. What we can conclude that for S, K is the absolute parent. K is the utmost character that should that it should converge to. So instead of R, let's write K. So whenever there are more elements part of the same group, the one element that has the least value she should be given precedence. And if you have understood this much, then you have cracked the problem. That's it. So let's apply the union find technique onto this example and you will understand it as we will uh, progress through it. The first mapping that we have is between M and P. And if I ask you guys, which character should be given precedence, M should be given precedence. That means whenever you want to ask yourself, uh, what is the ultimate value to which P should converge to, it should converge to M and what is the ultimate value to which M should converge to, it is M itself. So we can say that M converges onto M as a, a default principle and P should converge to M again. So far so good. The next character that we have is A and O. Uh, A maps to O and O maps to A. Which one is lower in precedence? A is lower in precedence. Therefore, if I ask you, Whenever uh, O is provided in the base string to which character it should converge, it should converge to A and for A itself, uh, it should converge to A. So we can represent it in this form. O is getting mapped to A always and whenever you want to converge A, it will converge to itself. The next mapping that we have is between R and R. So how it can be represented? R maps to R, uh, pretty simple and straightforward. The next mapping that we have is K and R. 
which one is lower in value k is lower in value what we can do uh, we can update the parent of r from r to k and for k uh, the mapping will remain as it is it basically means whenever you are asked to what character k finally converges it converges to k itself and whenever what what value does r converge it converges to k let's proceed ahead next we have e and i so out of e and i e is lower one so e will act as a parent for i and e will act as the final converging point for itself last character the last mapping that we have is between r and s uh, so if i ask you guys to which character should s finally converge to it should converge to r and what we can see from here r already has a mapping to k so it should be represented something like this s should converge to k because we have a mapping between r and s and r and k so k becomes the penultimate uh, converging point and uh, for whenever uh, you are asked to tell the final converging point for k it remains k itself for s it becomes k if you have understood this much then the problem is cracked as i told let's time to iterate through the base string uh, we have p where does p converge to p converges to m we have a a converges to a we have r r converges to k we have s s converges to k we have e e converges to e itself we have r r converges to k so we get m a k k e k and this is in sync with our expectation a uh, problem solved now if uh, how can we represent this in the form of code let's go to union find a uh, question that i solved long back in past and we will use the same union find template that we used there so time to code it up let's first talk about the union find template where you can get it go to coding decoders every preparation sheet you will find graph section over here and under graph you will find two important questions based on the concept of union find and i'll add this question as well onto this sheet uh, select this solution a lead code largest component by common factor it is a hard question on lead code where i have explained union find in detail so you can check this video out after this one and it basically explain union find very precisely what will i do i'll go to the solution over here and i'll check uh, the union find template i'll extract it it as it is so let's copy paste this template over here it basically has two methods get absolute parent and unify so let's go ahead and copy paste it over here however uh, there is a slight modification that we need to do uh, whenever we unify any two indexes together basically it means grouping them together uh, there is no precedence that has been stated in that question however here we have a precedence set the one that has lower absolute value should be given precedence over the other and hence uh, we have to update the logic from line 56 till line 63 which is pretty simple whichever has a lower value that that is being set as a parent uh, for uh, the other one so let's update it let's copy paste it over here and rest can work as it is so let me just delete the other code and let's submit this first and then we will go through it accepted now let's look at the core algorithm here i have created the union find object and the size that i have passed is 26 because in english we have 26 lower case character sp is used for building the output string we use a pointer to iterate over string s1 and s2 and we extract Uh, one character from s1 and other character from s2 we unify those two up and i'll talk about the unify helper method uh, it basically sets the absolute parent or the final converging point 
for character s1 and character s2 both of them and once we have done it for across all the characters present in my input s1 and s2 it's time to build our output string so you basically identify the absolute parent or absolute converging point for the character present in the base string and you extract the value out of it smallest mapped character you cast it into a character format and you add it in the string once you are out of the loop you have the answer with you so uh, the important thing is to write the unification method appropriately get absolute parent is pretty simple and straightforward and we have explained it in the previous video largest component by size so during unification you basically extract the absolute parent of the ith character you extract the absolute parent of jth character and the one that has the lower value gets set as to the other so absolute parent of uh, parent i is lower than absolute parent of j then what we are going to do we'll set the parent of absolute parent of j as absolute parent of y and if the other one is greater then we reverse the conditions simple and straightforward and this equation was very well explained in the question itself lexicographically smallest equivalent string with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding recorded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye